Ochre stars are a keystone species. Hi, what's going on? My name is Brandon. I'm a marine biologist and an artist, and welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my experiences with aquatic animals with you. It is my goal to raise awareness of our beautiful bodies of water and the creatures that live in them through science, stories, and art. If you are new, welcome. Please stick around to the very end to hear about this month's charity opportunity. Today we're going to be discovering the Ochre Sea Star. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Pisaster acracius are known as purple stars, or Ochre Sea Stars. I will just call them Ochre Stars. I also found out that when referring to a bunch of sea star species, they are called asteroids, which made me think of sea stars from space, which made me think of Starro the Conqueror, the first villain to fight the Justice League of America. But don't worry, sea stars aren't evil, but they are strong. I'll get to that later. Ochre stars can't be found in space. So the question remains, where can we find ochre sea stars? Their habitat range is in the eastern Pacific Ocean from Prince William Sound, Alaska to Santa Barbara, California. They are found in rocky intertidal, rocky coastline, mussel beds, and tide pools. They have a depth range from above the low tide to 90 meters, which is roughly 300 feet. As the tide lowers, sea stars will hide themselves under rocks or in shaded areas in the air until the tide returns. They cling to rocks and can stay outside of the water for several hours. They place themselves in locations so that they can survive. If you see one, just leave it alone. It is fine, don't pick it up and don't throw it back into the water. Okay, we know where to find the ochre star. What are we looking for? The ochre sea star is an invertebrate that is radially symmetrical. It has five rays or arms that extend from a central disc. The arms can grow between four and 10 inches long. It can either be bright orange, orange ochre, brown, or purple. Where the purple comes from, I don't know. Scientists don't know. But purple ochre stars are found in the Puget Sound, Salish Sea, Strait of Juan de Fuca, Washington, and north into Canada. That is a little strange. It is thought that it has to do with the location, water composition, and diet. Otherwise, the ochre sea star is orange or ochre in color in the open ocean. The top of the sea star is rough and leathery feeling. It has little white spines on it that protrude from the skin about two millimeters. These spines are called ossicles. I was going to make a joke about what do ochre stars and snowy weather have in common. Ossicles. But I won't. <laughs> a great way to determine if it is an ochre sea star or not is to look for a pentagon shape in the central disk. If you see a pentagon made from ossicles, it is an ochre sea star. It can be commonly mistaken for the pink star and the mottled sea star but these are pink and the other is mottled green. We have talked about the top of the sea star quite a bit. What about the bottom? The bottom of the sea star is a light cream with an oral cavity or mouth in the center. The bottom is lined with tons of tube feet. These are hydraulic powered tubes with suction cups at the end. Water pressure in the sea star controls how the tube feet move. At the end of each arm is a few light sensing organs. They can sort of see with these organs. Sea stars don't have brains or centralized nervous systems. They have nerve rings. Around their oral cavity and stomach is a bunch of fibers that act as a nervous system. Their body is regulated with a water vascular system. It allows water to come in and do gas exchange. The water can also be moved to move the tube feet. Sea stars are very strong. They can hold onto rocks while being beaten up by waves, 
hang off rocks in the air for hours, and pry open muscles. It might not be the kind of strength to fight the Justice League, but it is strong in its own way. I would like to see somebody hold onto a rock while being beat up by waves or open a muscle with their bare hands. Okra Sea Stars like being in small groups, roving around, eating, and being awesome. Okra Sea Stars are a keystone species. This means they are vital to the health of a whole ecosystem. Without them, the ecosystem falls apart. It gets its name from the keystone at the top of an archway. The keystone is placed at the top of the arch to hold it together and remain strong. Take out the keystone and the archway or doorway collapses. The ochre sea star are thought to be the first animal studied and named a keystone species. So that's pretty cool. Another fun fact is that sea stars can regrow their limbs if they get cut off. The even cooler part is that they can create a new sea star if part of the central disc is taken too. So, you can make several new sea stars from one if they are chopped in half. Please don't do this. The Department of Fish and Wildlife once did this to keep sea stars population under control. They thought cutting them in half and tossing them into the water again would kill them, but it doubled their population. I guess we should move on to our next segment of the adventure. What do ochre sea stars eat and how are they doing? Ochre sea stars eat mussels, barnacles, chitons, limpets, snails, and some crustaceans. They primarily keep Californian mussel populations in check. Mussels will take over an entire ecosystem if left unchecked. This means they push out all other species. Luckily, ochre sea stars eat tons of mussels and can keep the mussel population under control. This allows other species to take open spaces and create a healthy ecosystem. The only things that eat ochre sea stars are sea otters and glaucous wing gulls, or seagulls. So how are they doing? The IUCN Red List has them listed as not evaluated. Populations are doing well, but not great. In 2013 and 2014, a huge issue decimated many sea stars populations. It was known as sea star wasting syndrome. It was a bacterial infection that caused ochre sea stars to melt and die. It turned them into slime. It isn't really known what caused it to happen, but it was recorded every decade since the 1980s. It shows up for a bit, then goes away. The weird part is the bacteria that causes the disease is always present. It just spikes in density on occasion. It might be connected to warm temperature, but scientists are still working to figure it out. The ochre sea star typically lives for 20 years in the Salish Sea. They might experience a bloom in bacteria twice in their lifetime. It is my favorite time of the adventure. What was my encounter with the ochre sea star? I am so familiar with this species. I knew the scientific name before I went to high school. They are a staple for people to look at on field trips. Since we have severe tide fluctuations, it is fun to go to the beach to look at the tide pools and see the animals that are revealed as the tide goes out. I love walking the rocky beaches during low tide. It is super calming to me. I love being by bodies of water. It is good for my soul. Oh. What about these sea stars that I painted? I saw them at the Point Defiance Zoo and Aquarium in Tacoma, Washington. These were in the same tank as the red sea urchins. I love the lighting and the ability to get super close. Of course I touch them gently. They feel cool and bumpy. I love them so much. A spark of joy filled my heart. First, they're awesome animals. And second, I know what they are. I have seen them in the wild so many times. I had to learn more about them and share what I found. I hope you like ochre sea stars as much as I do. As the final details come into focus, I will call this adventure finished.
Thanks so much for watching. Click subscribe and ring the notification bell to be notified when I post new videos. I do my best to post new content every other weekend, but sometimes life gets in the way. These videos kind of take a long time to make. Autism Speaks is a, a charity that raises awareness about autism. It also identifies autism at an early age and helps young adults with autism grow into adulthood. For those who don't know, autism is a condition where people have issues with social skills, repetitive behavior, or heightened senses. I just want to make sure that this world is a warm, safe place for everyone to feel loved. I also need your support for this business. I love sharing my passions with you, but I need an active community to do so. I sell my art in the forms of originals, prints, and now I'm getting into stickers, cards, and posters. For originals and prints, please contact me. For stickers, cards, and posters, I will try and update my website so that you can purchase those there.